I'm serious. I think Lightroom should absolutely change the name to the Mask Anything tool. It would be a much more accurate description than what they're calling it now. But in all seriousness, this is one of the most grossly underutilized tools within Lightroom that also happens to be the only masking option that can literally mask anything. So I'm going to quit talking real quick and, and just show you why I think this tool is the best option for you and how it can really take your, your masking prowess to an entirely new level. So to jump right into it, I'm going to pick one of these, which one? Uh, I think this is probably one of the best examples of this right here. So if I want to, this is from a, a recent workshop in Greenland last year. If I wanted to, let's say, make the red sails kind of just jump off the screen a little bit. This photograph was captured at blue hour. It was very uh, dim lighting conditions. So if I really want to, to kind of make the red sail of, this, of the sailboat really pop, really stand out, how will I go about that? So I could come up here to the develop module. And I think the very obvious thing to try and do is just come over to the, uh, the color mixer, go to the red saturation channel and just kind of rock this back and forth. And it's doing an okay job, but look what it's doing to the clouds. That's not good. If we come up here to luminance, bring this up, same thing. It's, it's affecting the sailboat, but it's also affecting those clouds. And I, I definitely don't want to do that. So what do you do? This is where the, the mask anything tool comes to the rescue. I think one of the, the, I think something that's very important to note here is that all masks require some level of refinement. And I think that the combination of the way the mask anything tool works and the way that you can refine the mask, the combination of those two things together is what really makes this tool so, so powerful. So I'm gonna come up here to the masking section. And as you can see, I already have a few masks applied to this photograph, but nothing to the sailboat just yet. So I'm gonna come over here to create new mask and I'm gonna select objects. And there's two ways to do object selection. You can just do a paintbrush where you just kind of paint over the object. I personally like to do the kind of marquee square technique, which is just selecting this. Let's zoom into the sailboat a little bit more. And I'm just gonna draw this square. Whoops, let me do a better job than that. Across the sailboat, just like this. I think it looks pretty good. We'll let uh, Lightroom just do a little bit of thinking here, detecting the object that we're trying to, uh, to mask. And as you can see, it did a really good job. But you know, it's, it's targeting all of the boat. We don't really want that. And you can really see the difference here if we start to bring the exposure up. It's definitely targeting the sails, which is absolutely fantastic. But it's targeting all the areas, you know, the, the little slivers of, uh, of sky behind the sails. It's selecting the scalps to the sailboat itself. All we wanna do is just identify the red of the sails and that's it. And this is where I think the power, this, this technique here where we're going to refine the mask is why I think the mask anything tool, it's, it's called the object selection tool, but I think it's the, the mask anything tool, as I mentioned before, is a much better naming convention and here's why. So if I want to really, really refine this mask, let's zoom in a little bit further here. I'm gonna come up here to subtract. And I'm gonna come down here to color range. It's gonna give me this little eyedropper here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the areas that I want to subtract, or I'm gonna select the colors that I wanna subtract from this mask. So I definitely want to subtract this area here. And you'll see it put a little dot there. Now I'm gonna hold down the shift key. And if you look at my, my, my little, what do you call it? Water dropper right there on the screen. When I hit shift, you can see a plus sign comes up. And that's gonna give me the opportunity to select additional color samples. So I don't wanna select this color. And let's say I don't wanna select this part of the boat. I don't wanna select this white here. And you can do it larger areas too. If I hold on the shift key and say drag, I'm basically saying I don't want to select any colors that are associated with this box or inside of this box either. And you can select up to five different areas here. So I think I have all five. If you try and do more than five, you'll get this error message right here that says you have to remove one. But now that I have those on there, I'll toggle the mask on and off. It's kind of hard to tell because the, the, the mask is red and the sailboat's red. But look at how much more refined that mask is now. Now I can go, let me turn the mask off now. Now I can go in here and see, look at that all of that area between the sail, all of these little tiny areas through here are no longer a part of this mask. All of this area has been removed. Everything has been removed except for the area that we want to target. And we're zoomed in a lot. So let me zoom out back out to a more realistic uh, value here. And now we can maybe bring up the exposure a touch. Maybe we want to bring up the contrast a little bit, bring up the black point some. We get to come down to the saturation and bring that up. And as I toggle that mask on and off, you can see what a difference that has done. Let's zoom in again so we can really see as I toggle this on and off, 
So this is before, or that's after, before and after. So, so good. And let's go to the uh, zoom all the way out, I mean, to about right here and toggle that on and off. And you can see how good of a job that did. And I think that that's just absolutely incredible. You know, not too long ago in Lightroom, you couldn't do anything like that. But the uh, level of refinement now in the, uh, the object selection tool is just, is world-class for Lightroom, absolutely. It's so, so good. Is it is it as good as options inside of Photoshop? No, but I tell you what, every single year with every single update, the masking options inside of Lightroom gets closer and closer and closer to the overall power that Photoshop has. But this right here is pretty impressive because in my opinion, this is one of the more difficult masking uh, tasks that uh, you might encounter. Let's go to uh, another photograph real quick. Let me go back to library. Uh, let's go to the grid here. Let's go, uh, let's check this one out from Spain. Whoops. Let's say that I want to impact the, the green of this grass right here. This is really the one of the main reasons why I picked this composition. I love the grass and how it contrasts it against the rock. I just thought that was a very interesting foreground right there. So let's say that I wanted to come back to the color mixer and let's say I wanted to make that saturation of the, the grass stand out a little bit more, maybe make it a little bit brighter. But as you can see, we're impacting all of these areas right through here, and we don't want that. I just want to target just the, the main patch in the foreground that originally drew me to this composition. So let me just reset these real quick. And let's come up here to the mask, and let's select subjects. And we'll do the, the paintbrush technique instead of the, uh, the marquee selection. So paintbrush, you just select that right there, and you can adjust the size of it, or you can use the bracket keys. I normally use the bracket keys. I'm a big fan of shortcuts, so that's the way I do it. So I'm going to reduce the size of this, and I'm just going to paint over the areas of grass. You don't have to get super technical with this. You just want to make sure that you are covering the area that you want to target. So we're going to go like this, just like that. There, we're gonna let Lightroom th think. It's detecting the objects that Lightroom thinks we are trying to target here. And as you can see, it did a really good job on the outside, but it did a poor job in the center. So it's targeting this entire area right here, which we do not want. So we're gonna come up here to subtract. I'm gonna come over here to color range. And I have my little eyedrop picker here, you can see it. Let's turn the mask off by hitting shortcut key O. That toggles your masks on and off. So let's turn it off and let's zoom in a little bit here. Whoa, not that much. That's fine right there. And let's start to just pick some of these areas. So let's pick this color. Let's pick this area here. Maybe this tone here. Maybe it's a little bit darker right there. And there we go. Now I have my five. Now when I turn the mask off or on and off, look at that. It's only targeting grass. And that entire area, the stone in the center, is now removed. And you can even take it a step further here. When you use the color range, you'll have this kind of refined section. So it's gonna show you the, the overall, I guess the average sampled color right there. And then you can use the refine. So let me turn the mask back on. And if I turn, bring the refine down to say zero or one, you can see that. And I can bring it all the way up to 100, which is gonna be even more refined and kind of swing it back and forth. So let's bring it up to a rather high level to something about right there. Let me hit fit here to put, make this on my screen a little bit better size. And now we can start to make our adjustments. As you can see, as I can rock this back and forth, you can see how targeted that actually is. If I wanted to kind of warm up the grass right there, I could. If I want to introduce a little bit more black, maybe bring the shadows up a touch, whatever you want to do. And now as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. And that's a very, very big difference. Let me just bring this down. You can see just how targeted that is. So I think that's one of the, the best things about the object selection tool is not so much the tool itself. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why can't you just draw like a radial filter across the green grass? And you definitely can, but I'll show you the problem with that. So let's delete that mask. Let's come up here to, um, obviously we want to use linear gradient. Let's do radial gradient. We'll kind of drag it across this entire area here. But now you don't have the object selection, I guess uh, it has some kind of AI engine or something inside of it. But now Lightroom is not trying to detect what it thinks we're trying to target. It's just basically going to target wherever you put it. So as you can see, it's targeting this entire area. And yeah, we can come up here to, to subtract. We can go down to color range and we can start selecting all the areas that we don't want to target. But as you can see, there's just a lot more work that has to be done. As you can tell, I can't get it nearly as good as I was able to with the object selection tool. So I think the combination of object selection, object selection, or the mask anything tool, and the subtract by color range, that combination right there is the, the cat's pajamas. It 
I don't even know if I said that right. It's, I don't know. <laughs> Disregard what I said. It's, it's an awesome feature. That combination works very, very well. And I personally use this, that setup right there for almost all of my masking needs, except if I'm trying to do like a linear gradient across the sky, I'll use linear gradient. But basically anything outside of that, I use the object selection tool and refine it by subtracting a color range from that mask. And that combination works absolutely fantastic. So I do hope that you enjoy this kind of quick little Lightroom tip. I, I, I show this to a lot of people and I can see their mind is kind of like blown away. Like they're, why I never even use the object selection tool, right? I didn't even know you could subtract by color range. It's an absolutely fantastic feature. I don't know why it is so, it's, it's not hidden, but it doesn't, I don't know, if, if I designed Lightroom and I had such a powerful tool, I would put that thing front and center with icons and bold font and I'd make sure everybody knew what it was and where to find it. But nevertheless, after you watch this video, if you weren't, if you weren't aware of where it was, now you are. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions about the object selection tool, uh, please leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as human, humanly possible. And as always, I do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today, and I will see you all next Wednesday.